Hi, I'm Carol Sidorn and of Carol's Garden and we grow cut flowers on about two acres of land up here in Cheshire. Uh, we grow for selling direct to people and for weddings and to some for florists for wholesale or mainly for weddings and events and shoots and that kind of thing. So we really like to grow very naturalistic garden and wild flowers, not the uh, traditional floristry flowers. And I'm going to talk to you about cutting flowers and conditioning them from your garden or from a field. So the first thing we need to take into account is that ideally we do this first thing in the morning before it's too hot and but after dew or anything like that has gone off the flowers. And the reason for that is that the flowers take up water overnight and they become more turgid. And I would use a bucket. We use these florist buckets. Um, which you can get either hopefully from florists sometimes or you can often get them from supermarkets and if you can see but I've got fresh water in there probably up to about there on the bucket and um, just water I don't use flower food at all um, we don't need to preserve the, the life of flowers that long we don't like to use chemicals um, if you're lucky you can get hold of these buckets which don't spill they're called Dutch buckets because they originally came from the Dutch markets First of all I'm going to start with um, some really easy stems to cut. So these are Achillea and you'll see they're just flowering at the top of one stem. So I'm just going to go down and just cut that down as low as I want to do it. Um, they're not going to branch any more than that so it's just getting one stem like that. And now I'm going to talk about dahlias. So these are a little bit more complicated than the Achillea because they branch and they have a branching habit and lots of plants do this particularly Cosmos, uh, zinnias, scabious, lots of things and they branch and you can see from these that they've got a branching habit. So if I take one, and you won't be able to see without me cutting it, so I'll cut it. That's how they grow and you can see from that one I've got this stem here then I've got two buds here and every time there's one stem coming down you get two buds coming out. If I want to cut that dahlia at the moment, I'd say that dahlia is actually too far out. We probably should have deadheaded it. And I can tell that because these buds have got colour on them. So if I would just cut that one dahlia out like that, I'd get one short stem and that's fine. It might fit in a jam jar, but it's no good as a florist cut flower. But that leaves me with these two stems. Because they're very close to flowering, they're never going to get any longer. They're just going to stay that length. So. I end up with two quite short stems. So if I want a decent long stem, I'm going to cut this one here. So you can see I've got a nice fresh young flower. The ones following it are still green, but if I cut it down to there, the first junction, it's too short and these uh, actually they probably would be long enough in that case because it's a very good cut flower variety but I would normally cut right down to there to that point there if you can see that and then this stem here would come up and make another tall stem and that way you get many more flowers and it creates a nice stocky branching habit of dahlias we do not want great big tall dahlias When we've picked everything we bring them all back in their buckets into our workshop but any nice cool shady place is perfect and they need to sit there a good five or six hours ideally overnight for them to take up water rest and get used to being cut off the plants <laughs>